Welcome everyone to the online annual public speaking grand finals 2020 hosted by Mahadir Academy of Public Speaking. Now, I am especially so excited to be here today to see the top finalists, our grand finalists to compete for the spot of winning the Mahadir Academy Speech Contest champion for the year 2020. Now, before we move on, let me share with you a little bit of what Mahadir Academy of Public Speaking is all about. You see, here in Mahadir Academy, we believe that we would like to help all the youth to build their confidence, to build their self-esteem and their speaking ability so that they could become better speakers and better leaders in the future. And that is our core belief, because we believe that every child has a voice and that voice has the power to shape a nation and to change the world. So I am so excited here today because this is our third annual competition since 2018. Now, before we move on, I would like to share with you our contest highlights for our competition that took place in 2019. So here is the contest highlights. Check it out. I get a lucky draw and trophy. So then, why are we ever doing I thought maybe I would mess up. I'm a bit scared, but like, oh, I was confident as well, I guess. However, I wanted to give you something to think about. None of you wrote about the white part. When you're speaking, you don't really feel nervous. I feel like being nervous is fine, but you just have to calm yourself down and go up there and speak. Nobody's gonna laugh at you, you just have to feel confident on stage. After it was dark, the chief went to the morning place and took the phone. I do believe that highly introduce yourself in the market is better than any study. Public speaking, we give you the brief to talk in front of public, to meet her, someone in the future. I'm very satisfied with her performance. I like public speaking because you can get to talk in front of the crowd and you might gain confidence and may help you in the future. Elders are our wishes. Let us obey them. And I wish next year I can do the same thing. I just aim for champions. Public speaking skills is important for a child to follow the trend. Most of the parents actually uh, prefer the child to be more academic, right? But when I see the working place or uh, job world, it's actually not only the paperwork, what's written is important, but how they bring themselves up to the colleague and then to the boss, especially. The judge asks the farmer can use any pressure to weigh the butter. Public speaking skills are more important for a child because there are so many professions in the world that require public speaking skills. At the same time, it requires some research skill for them to develop their speech. The speaking is not only the skill that they will learn. It was a very significant change from where he was a few years back. He was not a very communicative person. And now you can see the way he delivered the message is really good. We've all heard of this word before in our life. We say it's important. You get used to seeing the audience and it gives you more confidence as well. If you want to join it, just do it, you know. Don't think about whether or not you're good enough. As long as you want to do it, just go for it. Our abilities were a and mine. I was really full of surprises to see the students here, the participants here, break through in terms of confidence. The fact that you were on stage today meant that you are already a winner at heart. Thank you all, especially to the parents, for giving your child that confidence. Because if it's not for you, they will not have that confidence. Now, wasn't that amazing? So that happened last year, and we did it in Taman Shopping Mall. And this year is going to be a little bit different because we are doing this completely online. It is something new. It is something different. And what I would like to share here today is I would like to congratulate each and every participant who took the initiative to join this competition. I know this is not an easy task, but all of the participants here today, they took the courage. They took that leap of faith 
to compete in something totally different. They took on the additional challenge to compete on an online virtual setting. And that itself shows resilience and determined mindset that they already have. So congratulations for that. Now, before we get into the competition, I would like to thank our sponsors for helping to make this event a successful one. I would like to extend my gratitude to Korean Language House, Tutu Toe Academy, Smart Junior Chef, Slimming Sanctuary, Zen and Co for helping to make this competition an amazing one. And not to mention our esteemed judges here today, three of them, Nazaruddin Abdullah, Gurmit Singh, and Dinesh Jayabalan, all of which of these judges are esteemed and professional in their field of expertise, in training, in giving speeches, in Toastmasters, and many more. So I would like to introduce our first judge for this competition, Nazaruddin Abdullah. Nazaruddin is a certified solution-focused coach, a licensed NLP practitioner, and a member of a Design Thinking Institute Malaysia. He's currently the head of culture management, downstream business in Petronas overseeing culture transformation program for close to 15,000 downstream staff. His current role involves him speaking in front of a large audience of diverse backgrounds, as well as engage in personalized one-to-one -one coaching conversations to accelerate culture change. He has been an active member of Toastmasters since his university days in Tokyo back in 2005. And over the past decade, he has served as a Toastmasters International District Office Club coach and mentor, as well as contested in numerous Toastmasters International competition in District 51. And he was the Speech Evaluation Contest District Champion in the year 2012. So on top of that, Nazar Rudin can speak multiple languages, which includes English, Malay, fluent in Hokkien, and even Japanese. So without further ado, let's welcome Nazaruddin Abdullah to say a few words of encouragement. Hi everyone, my name is Nazaruddin Abdullah and I'm one of the judges here at the annual public speaking contest at Mahade Academy. Congratulations to all of you for making it all the way here to the Grand Finals. I'm sure all of you have worked hard and this has been a memorable experience. I'd like to leave you with three things. The first, do remember why you joined the competition in the first place. This is part of a learning journey where you get to discover what you're good at and what else you can do to be a better speaker, communicator and future leader. So do remember this as an opportunity for you to grow. Secondly, I would like to congratulate all of you for being so brave and resilient and doing this virtually. I know it's not easy talking to the camera and also to the phone without a physical audience. So all of you have been very resilient and stepped up to the challenge. And last but not least, do remember to enjoy the experience. Some of us told me, do what you love and everything else will follow. So do remember the passion that you have and to remember to demonstrate that in everything you do. So once again, congratulations and I look forward to meeting all of you in person. Thank you so much, Nazaruddin. Moving on to our next judge, we have Gurmit Singh. Gurmit Singh is a corporate trainer who is certified by the Human Resource Development Fund, HRDF, and he is a recipient for the Bachelor's in Business Management Certification from the Nottingham Trent University, UK. He is also a postgraduate diploma holder from the University of Hertfordshire, UK. Gurmit is also passionate about public speaking and thus he joined Toastmasters in 2010. He was awarded the Advanced Communicator Gold and Advanced Leader Bronze title certifications by Toastmasters International. Furthermore, he has also participated in numerous contests and won multiple awards in Toastmasters. And among are his great achievements in Toastmasters. Table Topics Champion in the District Level 2015, International Speech Contest Champion in 2017 in the District Level, International Speech Contest third place in the World Championship of Public Speaking semifinals held in Vancouver, Canada. He is also the 2019 International Speech Contest District Champion. 
He is also the third place winner in the region quarterfinals of the World Championship of Public Speaking in 2019. So without further ado, let us welcome Gurmit Singh to share with us a few words of encouragement. Hello everyone, my name is Gurmit and I would like to say congratulations to all of you for making it this far. Now today I'd like to leave you with a piece of advice and the piece of advice is this never ever compare yourself with other speakers compare yourself with yourself what do I mean so for example let's say you delivered a really good speech today that's good tomorrow when you deliver another speech aim for that speech to be better than today's speech in my opinion, that is how a public speaker becomes better. So once again, my name is Gurmit and congratulations for making it this far. See you soon. Thank you so much, Gurmit. And now let's move on to our third judge, Dinesh Jayabalan. Dinesh is a TEDx speaker and a distinguished Toastmasters who's held several leadership positions. Well, he has judged both national and international public speaking competitions in various levels, and that includes joining debate competitions. He has reached national levels and even many, many levels in Malaysia. So he's also the winner of the first runner up in the evaluation contest in 2017 in the district level. So without further ado, let us welcome Dinesh Jayabalan to share a few words of encouragement. Hi there, hello, my name is Dinesh and it was indeed a great pleasure and honour to be able to judge you guys for this competition. So first of all, I just want to say congratulations on how far you've come and what you have done. It is something that you should definitely be proud of. When I was your age, I can assure you that I was nothing. I was nowhere near what you guys are. And that is something to be really proud of. I just want to say that competitions are great. Public speaking is great. But remember, the most important thing is everything in life. It's a learning journey. And I really hope that, you know, whatever the result is today, you take this as a learning journey and you go far. I'm very excited to know who the winners are. And I'm pretty sure you are as well. So I just want to say congratulations on making it this far and all the very best in whatever you do in the future. Good job, guys. You should be really proud of yourself and kudos to your parents as well for making it this far and bringing you and motivating you, empowering you and making sure that you are able to stand there today and give that speech. Very well done to everyone. Good job. All the very best. Thank you so much, Dinesh. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, are you ready for the speech contest? If you are, comment down below. Yes, I am. All right, awesome. So for the first contest, we shall begin with category B2, which is the storytelling category. And I shall pass over to our co-founder, Jolene Cheng, to run this session. To all the contestants, all the best and good luck. Our first contestant for category B2, Chan Chi Sung, The Three Men and the Dream. Hi, my name is Chi Sung and today I'll be telling you about my speech, The Three Men and the Dream. One day, there were three men traveling together and got lost. They decided to stay where they were and sleep under the trees. They only had one small piece of bread to eat and they were all very hungry. If we each have a bit, said the first man, we'll all still be hungry. Let's all go to sleep and whoever has the most wonderful dream will get to eat the piece of bread in the morning. So the others agreed and they put the piece of bread into a box and all lay down and fell asleep. But in the night, one of the men, who was a bit of a cheat, got up and ate the bread. Then he lay back down and fell asleep. The night passed. Two of the men woke up hungry the next morning. The third man woke up while he heard his two friends talking. He lay still with his eyes shut while he worked out what to tell them. The first two men both wanted to win the piece of bread, so one of them started to tell his dream. 
I dreamt that a golden host of angels came and took me up to heaven. There were trumpets blowing, and the chief angel waited at the gates to welcome me. Then it was the turn of the second man. I too dreamt that I went to heaven. In my dream, God himself welcomed me and took me to sit near his golden throne. The third man pretended to wake up suddenly and stared at his two friends. What? You two are still here? In my dream, I dreamt that you two had gone up to heaven and as no one ever comes back from heaven, I got up early and ate the bread myself. The end. Thank you. Our second speaker, Jamie Leung Zhu Lin, all the time in the world. Hi everyone, my name is Jamie. Today I'm going to talk about all the time in the world. Well, at the park one day, a woman sat down next to a man on a bench near a playground. There's my son over there, pointing to a little boy wearing a blue sweater who was gliding down the slide. He is a fine looking boy. That's my son over there, wearing a red sweater. Then, looking at his watch, he called to his son. Time to go now, Todd! Todd pleads. Five more minutes, Dad. Just five more minutes, please. The man nodded and Todd continued to swing on his heart content. Minutes passed away and the man stood and called to his son again. Time to go now, Todd. Todd again. Please, Dad, just five more minutes, please. The man said okay and Todd continued. My, you are certainly a patient father. The man smiled and said, My older son Tommy was killed by a drunk driver last year while he was riding a bike near here. I never spent much time with Tommy and now I vote not to do the same mistake with Todd. He thinks I have five more minutes to play. The truth is, I have five more minutes to watch him play. The moral of the story is, Spend much time with your family. Thank you. Our third speaker, Jaden Chu, Risking. Hi, my name is Jaden. My story is about Risking. Two seats lay side by side in the fertile spring soil. The first seat said, I want to grow. I want to send my roots deep into the soil beneath me and thrust my sprouts through the earth's crust above me. I want to unfold up my tender buds like banners to announce the arrival of spring. I want to feel the warmth of the sun on my face and the blessing of the morning dew on my petals. And so she grew. The second seed said, I am afraid. If I send my roots into the ground below, I don't know what I will encounter in the dark. If I push my way through the hot soil above me, I may damage my delicate spot. What if I let my butt open and smell tries to eat them? And if I were to open my blossoms, a small child may pull me from the ground. No, it is much better for me to wait until it is safe. And so she waited. A yak hand scratching around in the early spring ground for food found the waiting seat and promptly ate it. Moral of the story. Those of us who refuse to risk and grow get swallowed up by life. Thank you. Our fourth speaker, Lyra Tia. Self acceptance is the first step to happiness. There was this once a beautiful peacock who was all but admired his beautiful, glorious but his rough voice reminded him of his own shortcomings once again. 
all the joy was beaten out of him and he was almost in tears. Suddenly, he heard a nightingale singing and as he was listening to its sweet voice, his own shortcomings once again became very evident. He was wondering why he was jinxed in such a manner. Suddenly, the strong leader of the gods, Juno, appeared and questioned the peacock. Why are you so upset, my friend? The peacock explained about his rough voice and how unhappy he was about it. The nightingale has such a sweet voice and I have such a horrible voice. Juno listened and explained to the peacock. Every living being is made in a special way and it is so it serves for the greater purpose. Yes, the nightingale may be blessed with a sweet, sweet voice, but you too are blessed with a beautiful, glorious plumage. The trick is acceptance and making the most of what you have. The peacock realized how silly he was being and realized each living being is unique in one way or another. The moral of self-acceptance is the first step to happiness. Rather than being unhappy about what you don't have, make the most with what you do have. Our fifth speaker, Pritif Kumar, a hungry mouse. Good morning, everyone. My name is Pritif Kumar. I'm from SJKC St. Joseph. Today, I would like to tell you a story titled The Hungry Mouse. A mouse was having very tough time. She had no food for many days and made standoff effort to get her food. All her effort being in vain. She looked everywhere to find her food. As the days passed by, she became very thin. One day, she found a basket with corn. She also got this and tiny hole in the basket, which is sufficient enough to move her in. She easily moved inside the basket. Since she had no food for many days, she ate a large amount of corn. Without realizing her, she continuously ate more and more corn. She realized very little that she ate more corn than she actually required. After eating the whole corn, she became very fat. Such so she fed the corn, the fat mouse tried to come up from the basket through the small hole. Unfortunately, the small hole could not accommodate the big mouse. Mouse started to scream me. Oh God, let me get out. How should I get out? Uh, then, after hearing mouse screaming voice from the basket, Ask her what happened. Mouse told the story and asked Red a solution. Red told, if you wanted to come up from the basket, you should wait some time or even days to lose all your fat until you grow thin. The mouse started to save now, but a lot of food need to come up from the trap. The moral lesson of the story is, anything too much is good for nothing. Thank you. Our sixth speaker, Ruhan, think before you judge. A very good day to the honorable judges, teachers, and my dear friends. I'm Ruhan from HAKT Pramathan Tinggi, and I will like to present a story entitled Think Before You Judge. A doctor rushed to the hospital after receiving an urgent call for a surgery. Immediately, he went to the surgery block and found the boy's father pacing in the hall waiting for the doctor. <sniffs> On seeing him, the father yelled, Where have you been? Don't you know that my son's life is in danger? Don't you have any sense of responsibility? The doctor smiled and said, I'm sorry, I was out of station and I quickly rushed to the hospital after receiving the call. Could you please come down? Come down? <clears throat> if your son was in this room, and dies while waiting for the doctor, what will you do? Said the father angrily. The doctor smiled again and replied, We will do our best to save your son and please pray for his healthy life. Giving advices when we are not concerned is so easy, <laughs> murmured the father. The surgery took some 
hours and it was successful. Thank goodness your son is safe. And if you have any questions, please ask the nurse. And now she did the doctor. The doctor was in tearing hurry and did not able to entertain the father. Why is so elegant and went off without any explanation of your son's condition? Commented the father to the nurse. The nurse answered with tears streaming down her cheeks. <laughs> His son died yesterday in a road accident and he dashed off to resolve the burial ritual. <laughs> the moral of the story is, do not judge people because you never know what kind of battle they are fighting. Be kind, watch your words. Thank you. Our seventh speaker, Sasmita. Blue or red? Good day everyone, my name is Sasmita and I will be sharing a story entitled Blue or Red. Once there were two boys who were great friends and they determined to remain that way forever. When they grew up, they built their houses facing one another. There was a small path that formed a border between their house. One day, a trickster from the village decided to play a trick on them. He dressed himself in a two-color coat that is divided down the middle. So, one side of the coat was red and the other side was blue. The tester wore this coat and walked along the narrow path between the two houses of two friends. They were each working opposite of each other in their farms. The tester made enough voice as he passed them to make sure each of them would look up and see him passing. At the end of the day, one friend said to the other, Wasn't that a beautiful great coat a man was wearing today? No, the other replied. It was blue. I know what I saw, insisted the first man. The coat was red. You are wrong, the second man replied angrily. It was blue. Just then the trickster came and faced the two men who were punching and kicking each of them and shouting, Our friendship is over. The trickster walked directly in front of them and showed him his coat. The two friends saw his coat was red on one side and blue on the other. The two friends stopped fighting and screamed at the trickster saying, It is all your fault that we are fighting today. Don't blame me for the battle, replied the trickster. I didn't make you fight. Both of you are wrong and both of you are right. Yes, what each one saw was true, but you are only look at my quote from your point of view. The moral of the story is, do not look at things in one angle or in one point of view. Thank you. Our eighth speaker, Tang Mia, an old man lived in a village. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mia, and the title of my story is An Old Man Live in a Village. An old man lived in a village. He was one of the most unfortunate person in the world. The whole village was tired of him. He was always gloomy. He constantly complained and was always in a bad mood. The longer he lived, the more violent becoming and the more poisonous were his words. His misfortune became contagious. It was really unnatural and insulting to be happy next to him. He created a feeling of unhappiness into others. But one day, when he turned 80 years old, an incredible thing happened. Instantly, everyone started hearing the rumor. An old man is happy today. He doesn't complain. He smiles and even his face is freshened up. The whole village gathered. The old man was asked, What happened to you? Nothing special. For 80 years, I've been chasing happiness, but it was useless. Then I decided to live without happiness and just enjoy life. That's why I'm happy now, said the old man. The moral of the story is, don't chase happiness and just enjoy life. Thank you. Our ninth speaker, Tev Harish, a mother's love. A very good morning to the honorable judges. A mother's love, Thomas Edison story. One day, Thomas Edison came home from school and gave his mother a paper. This has been given to me by my teacher. She told me to give it only to you. His mother's eyes was full of tears as she reached to her son. Your son is a genius. This school is too small for him. 
and he doesn't have enough good teachers. You can teach your son yourself. Many years have passed and Thomas Edison mother had died. Thomas Edison became one of the greatest inventors of the century. One day while Thomas Edison was going through his closet, he saw the paper that was given to him by his teacher to, for his mother. He opened the paper and read it. Your son is mentally ill. We cannot keep him in our school anymore. He is expelled from the school. Thomas Edison became emotional and started writing it in his diary. Thomas Elva Edison is a mentally ill boy, but his mother made him the genius of the century. The moral of the story is a mother's love and upbringing can change the destiny of a child. Thank you. Our 10th speaker, Wimish Suresh, the frogs. Good day to everyone. My name is Wimish Suresh and I am from SGT Pasigudang, Johor. Today I am going to tell a story entitled The Frogs. As a group of frogs traveling through the woods, two of them fell into a deep pit. The other frogs crowded around the pit to see how deep was it. And they said that there were no hope left for them. But the two frogs ignored what the others said and decided to try and come out of the pit. Despite their efforts, the frogs up there were still saying to give up because they could not make it. Eventually, one of the frogs took heed to what the other said and fall down to die. But the other one was still trying. He jumped as high as he could and finally he made it up. When he came out, the frogs up there asked him, didn't you hear us? Then only he explained them that he was a deaf frog. He thought that they were encouraging him the entire time. So the moral of the story is people's word can make a big effect in lives. Think before it comes out of your mouth. It can be the difference between life and death. Thank you. This marks the end of the competition of B2 storytelling. Let's all give a thumbs up to give them the support and for the encouragement for all the effort that they have done. This contest wouldn't be successful without the support too from our sponsors. Our first sponsor, Zen and Co, a Japanese fusion cafe based in the Happy Garden, KL, and Banda Manjalara, Kepong. They specialize in a variety of Japanese cuisine, including the burger that they are doing promotion now. And nope, it's not 460 ringgit burger. Their burger is only 10 ringgit but it packs with flavor. You should also try their famous matcha coffee cube. Oh my goodness, that's one of my favorite beverage there. Our second sponsor is Tututo Academy. Tututo Academy specializes in classical ballet and modern jazz. They aim to provide students a solid training ground to pursue a career in professional dancing. Their students will also be given opportunity to perform on professional stage, whether as a soloist or in group. Their slogan is, where our dreams come alive. And they want to build a place where dreams come true for their dancers and also ballerinas. Before I move on, let's give a thumbs up for those who likes to cook. 
How about the ones that like to eat only? So the ones that like to eat only, please give a heart shake. That brings us to our third sponsor, Smart Junior Chef. Smart Junior Chef is a fun learning culinary school for kids. At Smart Junior Chef, children not only learn how to bake or cook, they also learn to have confidence, to have detail-oriented, to have discipline and so much more. And what they learn is a lifelong skill. If your child knows how to cook, you will never have to worry that they will go hungry. And who knows, one day you can just lay back and relax while your children cook for you. It's time for them to truly appreciate the meal that's, that you have prepared and also to give back to you. So moving on, let's watch three amazing posters and videos by our sponsors. for staying tuned to watch the videos. I hope you've enjoyed the videos as much as I did. Now, it's the time for prizes give away. Our sponsors are generous enough to give away vouchers for their classes. Our first sponsor for class, Tutu Tall Academy, is giving away 80 ringgit worth of trial class. Your child can choose either modern jazz or ballet. Why not let them try the class and decide if it's something they would like to pursue. If you want the 80 ringgit voucher, what you have to do now is to type in tutu in the comments. So type in T-U-T-U. -T -U. The first three person that Comment T U T U will get the voucher. So quickly type in T U T U and you will get the 80 ringgit voucher. Okay, I can see many people are typing in right now. Good, keep it up. What I'll do is I'll ask the admin to contact you guys for the vouchers. Moving on, our second class sponsor which is smart junior chef smart junior chef is currently offering an online cooking class and this online cooking class is worth rm199 so smart junior chef is giving up a 50 percent discount voucher therefore the price for the class is only 99 ringgit and 50 cents in this online class, your child will be exposed to 80 different simple recipes that your child can cook at home. 
So if you like the voucher, please type in chef, C H E F, chef in the comments, and I will admin our team will send the vouchers to you. Please type in chef, C H E F, chef, and you will get the voucher. When it comes to education, it's not only about the academic side. Other aspects of education can also be informed, not just public speaking, but also cooking and other forms of sports classes like dancing, swimming, so on and so forth. These are life essential skills that help the child to develop many parts of their body as well as their mind. So, Great job to parents who actually want the best for their child by sending them to all these classes so these children can be well equipped with all these lifelong lessons. Now is the time for our storytelling B1 session. Our first contestant for category B1, Chan Mei Ni, the bird and the ant. My mother always tells me that be kind and kindness will find you back. I couldn't get what it meant until I heard this story. Fellow judges, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mei Ni. I will share a story entitled the bird and the ant. On a hot summer day, a little ant ran down to the river for some water. As the ant walked to the tip of the leaf, a sudden gust of wind blew it into the river. Crow was very embarrassed. He decided to fly back to his crow 
old friends. However, his friends saw what he did. One to the one was shame of being grown. Didn't you want to be a peacock? You are not welcome here. Now, girl doesn't have any friends. My friends, the secret of happiness is by being satisfied with everything we have in our life. Thank you. The third speaker, Cheryl Sue, the sun and the wind. Yesterday, my friend argued, saying that they are the best. I couldn't help but to share with them a story because I believe that each of us has different strengths. Fellow judges, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Cheryl Su. The story that I shared with my friend entitled The Sun and the Wind. One day the wind approached the sun happening and asked, Hi sun, who do you think is the strongest in the world? It's me, the wind. The sun smiled and asked, Why do you think so? Just then, they saw a man walking through a field. The wind had an idea. See that man? Whoever makes him take off his jacket, wind. The wind started to blow as hard as he could. Ooh, ooh. The man held on his jacket tightly. That is strange. Why is the wind so strong today? He thought. Ooh. <coughs> oh, I'm too tired. I can't blow anymore. The sun then took her turn. She started to shine as bright as she could. The man started to sweat. He started to undo one button. And unbutton another. And finally took off his jacket. The wind felt embarrassed for trying to show off he promised not to do that again. My friends, we must always stay humble because being proud will stop us from learning. Thank you! The fourth speaker, Dasha Ram, the peacock and the crane. Hi friends, today I would like to talk about the peacock and the crane. Once upon a time, they lived in Beautiful peacock in the woods. The peacock was very proud of its beauty. It would always flaunt its beautiful feathers and make fun of other birds. One day, the peacock met a crane on the bank of a lake. He said to the crane with a sneer, What a colorless bird you are! Your feathers look gray and dusty. Look at my gorgeous feathers rock in the cooling of the rainbow. I look so majestic. Yes, you are beautiful, but I don't envy you at all, said the crane. What? Don't lie, said the peacock surprisingly. I can fly up in the sky with my wings. I can travel around the world and go wherever I want. All of you can do is touch above on the ground. Fine feathers alone don't make fine birds, said the crane and scored up into the blue sky. The peacock was ashamed and kept quiet. The moral of the story is 
It is better to be useful than to be beautiful. Never be so proud of yourself. One should be humble always. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my story and I am Dashil Ram. Thank you. Eunice Gong, the city mouse and the country mouse. A very good morning to the chairperson, honorable judges, and all my friends. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about the city mouse and the country mouse. Once upon a time, a city mouse lived with his friend who lived in the country. The country mouse took a lot of trouble to make tasty meals, beans, and roots. The city mouse nibbling alone each then said, my dear friend, I cannot understand how I can put with such poor food as these. Come, come with me, and I will show you how to live. Upon hearing this, the country mouse wasn't happy anymore. Why should I satisfy with this type of plain food? He cried. I am coming to the city with you. Off they went into the fine town house. They found leftover food for big dinner party. There were sweets, jellies, and all the very food a mouse could ever desire. Just as they were about to begin to enjoy their food, suddenly they heard a sound like meow, meow, and scratched on the door. Run, run, the cat is in the house, said the city mouse. In terror, the mice ran out screamed to a hole so narrow that it took an only find room in it by squeezing. As soon as they were out of danger, the country mouse hazy shook hands with his friend, saying, Thanks so much for everything, but I must rush off now. I can't stand all this shock. It's surrounded by too many dangers to please me. I prefer my plain food and simple life, where I'm safe and without fear. The city mouse did not stop his friend because he knew he was right. My dear friends, a simple life with security is far better than plenty limits of fear and uncertainty. Home is the best place on earth. Thank you. Eng Sheng Kai, the Woodman and the Golden Axe. Morning, soul judges, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to tell you a story entitled The Woodman and the Golden Axe. A woodman was cutting down the tree near a river. His axe fell out of his hands. Oh dear, that was my axe. Suddenly, a water spirit rose from the river. Why are you crying? The spirit asked. I dropped my axe in this river. The spirit dove into the river and came back up with a golden axe. Is this the one you lost? No, it is not. The spirit moved into a second time and brought up a silver axe. Is this the one you lost? No, it's not mine either. Once more, the spirit moved into the river and came back up with an old dirty axe. Is this the one you lost? Yes, thank you, thank you, that's it. The spirit was surprised. You are an honest man. I will also let you have the two other axes. The woodman told this story to his friends. One of them was very greedy. He went to the same river and dropped his axe. The spirit returned. The man cried, I dropped my axe in this river. The spirit dove into the river and came back over a golden axe, just as before. Is this the one you lost? Yes, that's mine, that's mine. The spirit was very angry at him. You are a liar. You have nothing. Remember everyone, honesty is the best policy. No matter what, you should always be honest. And again, make sure this honesty is very short lived and will never keep you happy. Thank you. Oi E N, the fox and the goat. Hi, my name is Erisa Oi. I am 10. My story is the fox and the goat. On a long sunny day, there was a fox walking in the desert. Oh, it is so hot! I need water badly, said the fox. Suddenly, he saw a well. She ran and ran in great excitement. The moment she laid on the well's wall, he lost his balance and fell into the well. Cry the fox. 
all about. Who, hey, Mr. Fox? What are you doing inside this well? Oh, God! I just came inside this well to cool myself off, replied the sly fox. Not even thinking for a second, the goat immediately jumped into the well and began to drink. Suddenly, the goat stops and asks, The Gold and Diamond Hi, my name is Carson and today my title of my story is The Gold and Diamond. A long time ago, in Egypt lived a famous person named Zunun. A young man came to visit him and asked, Teacher, I do not understand why people like you dress in such way and very simple. Zunun only smiled and took his ring from one of his fingers and said, Take this ring, go to the market. Can you sell this for one chip of gold? Having looked at Zunun's dirty ring, the young man thought. But Zunun said, Try first, young man. The young man quickly went to the market. He offered the ring to the traders and others. But nobody was willing to pay for a chip of gold. He then went back to Zunun and reported, Teacher, nobody offered more than a chip of gold. With a wide smile, Zunun said, Now go to the gold shop. Show this to the gold trader. Do not give the price. Just listen how much he will pay for it. The young man quickly went to the gold shop and came back with a different expression from his face. He then said, Wow, the gold trader offered this ring for one thousand of gold. Zunun only smiled and said, That was the answer of your question, my friend. Someone cannot be valued only with his dress. The moral of the story is, just like a goat, inside someone cannot be valued if you could look in the inner soul. It needs a heart to see and it needs a process. Thank you. Tan Zi Han, the wolf and the lamb. We always panic when we are in trouble. However, panic does not help. We should stay calm instead. Fellow judges, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Zhang Han and I would like to share a story entitled The Wolf and the Lamb. Once a little lamb was grazing in the meadow along with the flock of sheep. The lamb wandered some distance away from the flock, but was unaware of that. It enjoyed the fresh and delicious grass. Man, man, the lamb was also unaware that a wolf was following it closely. When the lamb was ready to turn around, it was stunned to see a hungry wolf standing behind it. The lamb was scared.
Tejasvi, stop worrying and start living. Hi friends, I'm Tejasvi. Today, I'm going to share a story of a fearless, focused, pregnant girl. The title of my story is Stop Worrying and Start Living. Once there was a pregnant girl and when the time came to give birth, she found a hidden place by the side of a river. Just then, a strong bolt of lightning hit the forest and started fire. She looked to her left and found there was a hunter ready to shoot her. On her right, there was a hungry lion waiting to attack her. Oh my goodness, what to do in this situation? She had no way to go. In this situation where there is no way out, the deer decided to focus on one thing she could focus on, on giving birth. Then a sharp bolt of lightning happened. The hunter got the stroke and as he released the arrow, it passed the deer and hit the hungry lion and it ran towards the hunter. Then a strong shower of rain put out the fire. You see what deer got trapped in the first place and how all the problems got solved finally. So, like the pregnant deer, let us learn what we can do our best in these pandemic times. Don't panic and learn how to be safe and healthy. The moral of the story is how to be fearless and take right decisions when facing any difficult times. Thank you. That marks the end of category B1 storytelling session by our charismatic and adorable speakers. Now is the time for the giveaway session by our sponsors. But before that, who are our sponsors? Our fourth sponsor, Slimming Sanctuary. It is a one-stop beauty and aesthetic center. They offer luxurious wellness and beauty services for body, face, wellness, and spa for both men and women. So stay tuned while we'll be giving out free treatments such as facial, massage, hair removal, and even slimming programs from Slimming Sanctuary. And after the introduction of the Slimming Sanctuary video, we have a video by a Korean oppa. How many of you love watching Korean dramas? Give a love love sign if you have watched any of these Korean dramas before. Let's say a legend of Blue Sea. Give a love sign. The world of the married. <laughs> that show you can't stop for watching it. My love from the stars. Nice. How about Hotel Del Luna? Give a love sign if you have watched Hotel Del Luna. How about the latest one? It's okay to not be okay. Wonderful. So let's watch a video from Slimming Sanctuary and the Oppa.
지금 케이팝이나 한국 드라마가 말레이시아에서도 유행하고 있는데요 혹시 한국어로 배우고 싶은 생각은 없습니까? KLH에서는 한국어를 즐겁게 배울 수 있습니다 저희와 함께 한국어로 배우지 않겠습니까? KLH에서 여러분을 기다리고 있겠습니다 감사합니다 As mentioned, Slimming Sanctuary is giving up free treatments for face, body massage, facial remover, and even slimming. So if you want the free treatment for your mom, type in SS mom. If you want for your dad, type in SS dad. If you want for your wife or your girlfriend, you can type in SS wife or SS girlfriend GF also can or if you want for your grandma you can type in SS grandma and your mom dad girlfriend boyfriend grandma is able to get this free voucher our team will send it to you later on this free voucher is either for facial massage, hair removal, or even slimming. Wonderful! It looks like you love your mom, dad, grandma, boyfriend, girlfriend a lot in order to get for them this free voucher. Okay, so next we are giving out a 150 ringgit voucher worth of free Korean class. Now finally, you can learn how to speak Korean in this crash course worth 150 ringgit. So if you want this 150 ringgit Korean class voucher, what you have to do is, <laughs> you gotta type in, I love you in Korean. So how do you say, I love you in Korean? So type in, I love you in Korean. Saranghae. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. Saranghae. I don't mind the spellings. S A R A N G H A E, perhaps. Saranghae. So type in the first 10, we'll get a free Korean class by Korean Language House at Bukit Jalil. So they have online classes as well as physical classes. If you want to go for the physical class, you have to go to the Korean language house in Bukit Jalil, whereby they will give you the free Korean class of 150 ringgit. So type in Sarang Hair in Korean. <laughs> Yes, type in Saranghae in the comments and you would get the voucher. Our team will PM you for the voucher. Wow, looking at so much of I love you, Saranghae, I feel so, so love. Thank you so much, guys. Our team will send out the vouchers to you. So moving on, we are going to our next competition, which is the category A, original speech. Original speech means that they write the speech on their own. Wow, kids nowadays, students nowadays, they are so amazing. With the right guidance and tools, the things that they are create is truly amazing as what you can see from the previous category B1 and B2. Amazing, amazing speakers and you'll be blown away by this last category, category A of mature speakers who actually wrote their own speeches. Enjoy guys. Our first contestant for Category A, Original Speech, Dion Amarado Prihadi. Beauty and intelligence don't make you a good person. Greetings to everyone. 
My name is Dion and today I'll be talking about why beauty and intelligence don't make you a good person. We tend to judge people based on how they look or how smart they are. Now what if I tell you those two things don't matter at all? You can be a beautiful angel with a demonic heart. An example of this would be Elliot Roger. Despite being somewhat handsome, he's proven himself to be entitled and thinks all women should be attracted to him and couldn't comprehend the idea of rejection properly to the extent of causing a massacre in Isla Vista in 2014. This only proved that Elliot was, all in all, a horrible person, especially towards women. Intelligence does not define someone's morals. While a high IQ is indeed necessary, so are ethics. I remember being taught in my old school that while they appreciate their students being smart, they also teach their students kindness and etiquette. Otherwise, they'd be bullies. What makes a good person is kindness. A kind person helps other people in need, is empathetic towards other people, and knows the difference between right and wrong. In conclusion, beauty and intelligence don't make you a good person. Kindness does. And I think we should all be kind to each other. Thank you. Our second speaker, Yumilia Chin, a creative catastrophe. Someone once said that burnout is what happens when you try to be resilient for too long. It's not the result of the resilience itself, but it is the result of not getting enough rest. I remember the feeling of flipping through the blank pages of my sketchbook, wondering if my art was good enough, if I was good enough to achieve my goals in life. How many people have experienced the same thing? Hi, my name is Yumelia Chin, and today I'll be talking about creative burnout. What is creative burnout? Creative burnout is when you've pushed your creative energy beyond recovery. It's when you feel like you're not a real artist, writer, or musician, and you regularly talk badly about yourself and believe that you're not good enough. It's a mental health issue that affects all creatives, but it affects the resilient ones a lot more. There are plenty of YouTube videos that can help with these topics, and I personally believe that some of these videos can completely guide someone through their burnout, but it all depends on how much it can help you. My number one tip for you, if you yourself are experiencing burnout and the tips in the videos don't help you, is to take a break. Taking a break lets you rest every once in a while, and it, don't worry, it's okay to relax. You wouldn't overwork a overheating machine, so why would you do it for yourself? It's okay to be resilient, but don't let toxic resilience take over you. Thank you. Our third speaker, Noraini Sophia. The importance of unity. Ladies and gentlemen, do raise up your hands if you think unity is important. Thank you to those who raise up. Yes. Unity is an important element for the society we live in as we all together form this whole nation. As the quote saying, strength is always with the unity. Hi, my name is Nur Aini Sophia and the topic I'll be talking about today is the importance of unity. First of all, what is unity? Unity is when everyone stands together for every big and small problem. First of all, unity is important when fighting a mission. For an example, unity is important between the Malaysian soldiers when they were in a war in order to achieve independence from Malaysia. And the unity between the Malaysian people is also an important role in order to defend the country from falling into the hands of the communists and so that Malaysia stands strong. Another example that I can see with my own eyes and I bet 
all my fellow Malaysians can see as well how we all unite together in fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes, this is not over yet, but the unity between us has gave a big impact in helping Malaysia. Imagine if we live in a country that doesn't apply an element of unity, we will live without peace. In summary, unity is important in our society as we Malaysians live in a multiracial country. Without unity, there will be no peace. Thank you. Our fourth speaker, Tai Wei Liang, the key to success. A very good morning to my honorable judges, teachers, and friends. My name is Wei Liang, and I would like to share a story with all of you. Last year, I represented my school in the inter-school English public speaking competition. As it was a really important competition, I prepared for it three months in advance. On that day itself, I presented my speech with clarity and coherence. Everyone praised my speech. I was really confident that I could make it at least to the top three, if not being the champion. It was time for the results to be announced. Third place, not me. Second place, not me either. First place, would it be me? It will definitely be me, I thought. But it wasn't me either. I was defeated, dejected, disappointed. Did I put in so much effort just to lose? I questioned myself. I was so disappointed that I wanted to quit public speaking until my teacher gave me this piece of advice. Failure is the key to success. With that, I got up and continued training until I'm standing here today, sharing my story with all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, before I end my speech, I would like to tell all of you that not every time we will taste success or victory, even if we put in much effort. But most importantly, we will grow stronger and improve every time we fail, because failure is the first step to success. Thank you. Our fifth speaker, Juan Humaira Barricia, teenager and sleep. Hi, I'm Humaira. Today, I would like to share a fantastic topic. It is about teenagers and sleep. 2020 is destined for the world to experience a continuing COVID-19 pandemic. It has caused the global social and economic disruption, massive cancellation, and postponements of events and worldwide lockdowns. Distribution of the COVID-19 epidemic and movement control order give an impression of various aspects of emotions, thoughts, and individual behavior. For children and adolescents, they have to adapt to new changes such as online learning and being at home for a long period of time that minimizes their physical activities. Biological changes push things toward a later night or sleep schedule. The high use of electronic devices among them disrupts adolescent sleep time. Did you know that 9 out of 10 of Malaysians experience sleep disorder? Sleep disorder disrupting teenager basic circadian rhythm which leads to weight gain, impulsivity, slower thinking, and other physiological and behavioral changes. Alex et al. in their study showed that sleep disturbance is likely to affect resilience and can consequently increase behavioral problems in children and adolescents aged 7 to 18 years old. Sleep disturbance is an indicator of something else going on in teens' life. Our teenager needs a support group as a voice of them. The unity of parents, a supportive community with an effective governance mechanism helps them to live in the modernization era. The teenager is the hope and the pillar of the nation. Therefore, adequate sleep is essential for the physical and mental growth of adolescents. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this information will benefit you. 
Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to our online annual public speaking grand finals 2020. And over here, I would just like to share with you on how you can enjoy free two classes with us just because you tuned in with us. Now, this two classes is suitable for students aged 5 to 17 years old at the following venue. We have venues at Bukit Jalil, Puchong, and Putra Heights. And of course, this is only limited to the first 10 students. So if you like to take this opportunity to grab this opportunity worth 199 ringgit, find out more with the link down below. That is bit.ly slash Mahadir Academy. And of course, you can contact us and we will get back to you with your free two classes. So don't wait. Take this opportunity as this is only limited to the first 10 students. Now with that, let's move on to our next segment. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time for us to reveal the winners for the online annual speech contest grand finals 2020. Now all the participants, they did an excellent job. And if you notice, I changed my shirt just so for this particular event because I'm excited and I'm sure you are equally as excited as well. So we are going to reveal the winners, the top three winners from each category, starting with category A, which is the original speech writing category. So let us begin. In second runner up place, we have Rum Rose. Yumilia Chin! Well done, Yumilia! Definitely, you have inspired us with your amazing message. Now, moving on to the first runner up place. Can we have the drum rolls once again? And the first runner up goes to Noor Aini Sophia! Well done! Excellent job. And I believe we are all inspired to be united in this day and age. Now, of course, moving on to our champion for category A, original speech writing for the Mahadir Academy 2020 awards goes to from Rose Tai Wei Liang. Well done. Very good job and amazingly well-crafted speech. Now to all the participants here in category A, I think all of you shared with us an amazing message. And here are the three winners for category A, original speech writing. A very good job and well done. Moving on to the winners for category B1. Are you ready? All right, so for the second runner-up place for category B1 storytelling goes to drum roll, please. Tanka Singh, well done. A very good job. Moving on to the first runner-up for category B1 storytelling goes to drum rolls Chan Mei Yi very good job well done and now ladies and gentlemen the moment we've all been waiting for category B1 storytelling champion for 2020 in Mahadri Academy's annual competition goes to Drum rolls. And the winner is Ui E Earn. Very, very good job. An excellent job. Well done indeed. Now, to all the participants in category B1, I know all of you put your heart and soul into creating this speech and to make it the best that you can. A very good job to all the participants here today. Moving on 
to category B2. Let us announce the winners for the storytelling category and in the second runner-up place goes to drum rolls please Vinesh Suresh good job all right now let us move on to the first runner-up for category b2 storytelling and that place goes to drum rolls Two, well done. Excellent job. And now for the champion for category B2 storytelling, the champion for this year's 2020 storytelling competition goes to drum rolls, please. And the champion is Ruben Anadunaki, Robin Tharan. Well done, Ruben. Ruhan, excellent job. And I believe that all of us are inspired by your hard work in creating your props and making the whole speech so exciting and interesting. And to all the participants here in Category B2, all the dedication and hard work that you've put in to make your speech amazing, that shows dedication and that shows resilience. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we've all seen the winners for today's category. And before I move on, I would like to share a few messages just from my heart to all the participants here today. So the message that I wanted to share is all of you did the impossible, which is to take that leap of faith, that scary step to compete in something new, something foreign. It is not easy, I know, to compete in an online setting for a public speaking contest. But the fact that you took the initiative, you took that scary step and you did it anyways, that really shows how strong you are in adapting to the situation and how determined you are in life. You see, ladies and gentlemen, and all the participants, in a competition, there are no winners or losers. There are always learners. When we win, we learn. When we don't win, we also learn, but that doesn't mean that you are a loser or we are a loser. Because every time that we step into something new, every time that we put ourselves out there, we learn something. And wouldn't you agree that throughout this competition, throughout these weeks of competition, you have learned a lot about who you are as a speaker and how you can improve I'm sure you did. You see, most of us who joins competition, we only have that one goal, which is to win a trophy and to bring it home. But let's not put that as our focus because that is not what we should put our heart and soul into. We can't join a competition and just say, I wanna go for goal, go for goal. But instead, why don't we think about how can we grow? from this experience? How can we learn something so the next time when we join a competition, the only person that we are competing with is ourselves, our past selves. And when you look back at your old videos and your old performance and your performance today, compare them because you will see a huge difference in your development and your growth. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for taking your time to tune in to this online annual public speaking grand finals 2020. My name is Coach Mahadev, and it was a pleasure to be the MC for this evening. With that, thank you very much and take care.